I went in in 44, okay, and uh, I was 17 at the time when I enlisted in 1944, and I got called up after I turned 18, which was in late 44, and I was called up in the enlisted ranks, and I was an aircraft maintenance mechanic at that time. And then after I got released out of that, after World War II, I got commissioned I got recalled during the Korean crisis. So I was back in again. I went back in again in 51. This one behind me is a B model. I flew in the H models. Uh, we trained at uh, Castle Air Force Base in the D models. And then in 1961, I went into the H models. I was in the, what we call the black hole, the navigator's hole, the pilot, co-pilot, Weapons officer and gunner were on the upper deck, and the nav and I, and I as a radar nav, was at the lower deck. It was during the Cold War. The B-52s were built primarily for a nuclear platform for delivering nuclear weapons. When the Vietnam War broke out, the older planes, the Ds and the Fs, went from nuclear deterrent to iron bombs and they flew, they flew in Vietnam. The G's and the H's stayed in the nuclear until uh, I'd say uh, 72, and then the G models were pulled into the iron bomb phase also. We, do, we flew a lot of 10 and 12 hour training missions without weapons, but we always practiced, practiced nuclear delivery. And then when we flew our 24 hour missions, or we also, Flew, uh, we flew one out of Thule on a racetrack called Hard Hat, and then uh, Chrome Dome. We flew around Canada on that one. That was a 24-hour mission, and we were in striking conditions, conditions of our targets at all times. And our targets changed depending on where we were in our flight. So we had to program for different targets at different places and it changed by time zone, basically, or where we were, where our delivery would be. We would get two air refuelings on the mission, and uh, I'd say we were always within 16 to 18 hours strike zone. The, when we take off, our first refueling was usually up the St. Lawrence River, and then we would fly around Canada, up over Thule, and then head into Point Barrel, Alaska, and then from there we would catch another tanker, be able to get us home. Well, when we're flying up there uh, over the North Pole in that area up there, we're at a we're at a point there. If we didn't get refueling, we were at a point in no return that we had to go go, and uh, let the chips fall where they may. Yes, every once in a while we'd see a Russian bear flying up there doing the same thing we were doing, and uh, they were flying and. Uh, we were flying, so every once in a while we would see a bear. It always struck us when we were carrying the nukes that we were going to have one heck of a responsibility. And thank God we never had to release one. But it was always a thing, and the people in charge of that was the, was the pilot and myself were in charge with the security of our targets until we got a go sign to go and then at that time we could get into our maps and things like that to know where we were headed. The ones we picked up from the factory in 61 are the ones that are flying today, the H models. And they intend them to fly for several years yet to come. So it's the same airplane that it's over 40 years old and they're still flying them. When we started carrying nuclear weapons, your attitude had to change and you're no kid anymore. You got one big responsibility to you, the world, and yourself, and the nation. 
the Cold War was when, when Russia was rattling their sabers over there and to keep them from rattling their sabers too much that we put the airborne alert in effect to let them know that don't start anything because we're ready for you also. So that was during the Cold War. It was a long, long process during the Cold War. Uh, everything I think started purposely during the Cuban crisis is when we started going on airborne alert and we also stood ground alert. If we were on ground alert, we were on duty for 24 hours for seven days in a row. And we lived out on the alert pad. And uh, we just sat out there for 24 hour days, seven days in a row. In just case uh, anything happened, we would take off, our takeoff schedules on that was 15, 15 second intervals between bombers taken off. I think, I think we halted Russia from thinking that they could come into our country and take over and bomb us. I think our deterred force up there was uh, one of those things that, hey guys, if you come after us, we're coming right after you. So uh, I think that was the whole thing about saving the world is we were looking at each other and uh, saying, don't tread on us and we won't tread on you. There's still a role for the B-52s for some time, uh, but we're getting more to unmanned aircraft today where we don't have to send a crew up. Somebody is flying that airplane from the ground. And so it's a different, it's a different area now, era now that we're in. And uh, I think it's fantastic. I wish I could have been in today.